over the years, not only this government, over the years, there is a bit of divergence between what experts will, will recommend and then what um, the political economy will do, right? So, and once we don't do the right things and doing them consistently, we find ourselves in this um, situation. So it's been almost predictable, right, um, that if you fail to do the right things, you can't expect a different outcome other than what will show up at the end of the day. So um, we are hoping that in these difficult times, um, we'll be able to find some level of convergence in terms of consensus building in, in, in how we come out of this. That is very important. Uh, the reason I say so is that if you look at the level of economic crisis, um, debt is unsustainable. We are talking about an IMF program. We know bas basically it will be full of austerity. Um, that's going to be painful. Sometimes those, those costs may not be proportionately distributed. It may affect those at the lower end and the rest of them. It will be important that we build consensus, uh, swallow our political pride, reach out to each other, both opposition and in government, civil society, um, independent experts and the rest of them, harvest those expertise, alternative solutions, and let's see how we can concretize them. Because time is not on our side. Every country is moving forward. They are responding in diverse ways based on their expertise and what they think they must have, they must do for their country. We cannot afford to think that the current situation will just disappear by itself or some imaginary economy will drop from heaven and just replace what we are going through now. Countries that developed, they were deliberate. And there's enough knowledge in this country. There's enough expertise in this country. Look, development is knowledge intensive. So the country must prioritize the, the, the knowledge that we have and make sure that any policy we want to put out there, we, we fact check that with those who are relevant, have relevant expertise in those areas, so that the little money we spend, we put it in areas where we can derive the maximum benefits. That is the only way we can come out of it. And whilst we are excited about great, great potential to generate a lot of domestic revenue, we should equally be advising government to be efficient with expenditure. Because in this country, we have been very wasteful. And we have said that we have been wasteful to the extent that the way we are operationalizing our democracy is so expensive. The cost of running our democracy in terms of size of government and all of that is, is just too huge. And, and at the end, when we are done, it leaves very little for where money has to go in order for growth to be engineered. And that's, that's our problem. So we are, that's why we are saying, yes, we'll collect more revenue. We all have to be more tax compliant. But we are also saying that let's look at the expenditure. Let's take advantage of this crisis. Let's reduce the number of ministers to about 40 or below. We can do that. And in fact, then reducing the number of ministers or the size of government drastically will not affect growth. It will rather free up space for growth enhancing spending. That's the only way Ghana can come out of this. Mm -hmm.